reason people relate to me is because it's like so many people start to like or like have a dream but they just never kind of like try to make it happen and like and I did and this is what happened. Hi, well my name is Anna Dalvi and um yes, I am I guess the real life Anna from uh, the Netflix series Inventing Anna. I have been on house arrest. I got out of jail around 90 days, a bit over 90 days now. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to find a way to work around the constraints that I have. I hope everybody who's watching Inventing Anna will take a series kind of like with a grain of salt. And it's obviously a dramatized version of real life events. So hopefully nobody will assume that it's not a documentary. It was never meant to be. I was still in jail. I watched a couple of like outtakes. I watched maybe like 30 minutes of it in total i had like a facetime app like something similar to this just for jail so a couple journalists showed it to me to like get my reaction and that's pretty much it i still have not seen it in full it has to be like appealing to people they also like do tests on like you know the middle america audience so they had to like replace the hotel with like something more like you know kind of like plaza like and i guess the same applies to the rest of the series what translates with certain audiences doesn't translate with the other ones. So they had to like make it mainstream. So people all, all over the world would kind of like be able to relate to it. So I lived in Paris for about two years. I just started interning at Purple and I learned so much because it's such a small magazine. So I got to do like a little bit of everything. So that was at the time where Paris was launching the English speaking side. So you know how they like have booked out afar and then you can read the same content in English. But I decided, I guess I'd be just like fetching coffee if I were to like agree with content asked. So I decided I could learn more at a small publication. Well, it's a very art heavy magazine. So this is where I learned more about art. I was like editing pictures, you know, like they used to be Purple Diary. So I was like editing pictures and like putting them online kind of pretty much every day. So the editor in chief, he used to be like an art critic for Art Forum. And uh, we just had like all kinds of artists coming in and out of the office and before that I was like kind of heavily focused on fashion it was just fashion 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 and then I kind of realized that fashion is just it's like it's art as well just like I always like clothes I don't know why people feel the need to like shame me for that it just doesn't really like you can still like care about clothes and you can still like work on something that matters it just have to be like one or another thing if you organize and if you plan your wardrobe and outfits, like it doesn't have to take much time. It's like, it doesn't mean like all I do is like think about what I'm going to wear. Like that's not true. <laughs> like mostly only women facing that, you know, like even when I went to trial, like nobody really is dissecting like men's outfits. Like I get it. They only wear suits, but that's like what makes it so easy <laughs> because there's not really much choice. Well, it was like a gradual process. Like, a lot of it is so like nothing there's no single event that just like happened overnight it's always like one thing led to another and I was just like trying to make it happen I mean I was not completely off when you see what happened to the building to 281 Park Avenue South now like it's pretty much a very similar concept I've been trying to create and they like made it happen and it was successful so it's like nobody can say I was just like trying to like run some fraud because it's like the proof is right there. So the way they define like fraud is the mindset. If your intention was to permanently deprive somebody of funds or property, and that was just never my intention and nobody can tell me what my intentions were. It's like, if I had a chance, like everybody would have been paid back and everybody would have been made whole. I'm not trying to like make excuses for the bad decisions I made in the past, but it's like, it was a viable project and it was, it had a viable business model. I did not choose the best way to like go about it, but I never had like a criminal mindset, what they call, like a sign term, so they call in legal speak. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully people will like, don't want to discredit me and hopefully people will give me a chance and like see what I'm going to do next. Hopefully like nobody will look at this and think like crimes are glamorous or this is what you need to do to like become famous. Hopefully like I won't push anybody to like do what I've done because like I've struggled so much down the road and just nobody sees it.
It's like, you know, like there are no photographers in jail. Like nobody kind of like sees the stretches of time that happened in between. Like when I went to court and when I got out, all people see is like, oh, I went from the court to house arrest. And it's just like not the reality. People don't really um, see the whole picture because there's no way because media just is not covering it. Just trying to kind of like show people that there's a lot to it. And um, I've had like so many like bad times too. And it's like, I've spent a lot of time in jail. Like I've been to a couple of jails, but yeah, I've been at Rikers for 19 months. So I didn't know anything about it before I went there, which is like never really an area of my interest. Like I knew it was existed and I thought like it was a place from like, from the movies. I thought it was fictional. I mean, it's a wild place. And like, I was younger. I got arrested when I was 26. I feel like it's not as dangerous as the men's jail, just because women are not as violent by nature as men are. And also it's like the way you're being handled by the guards, like nobody's really like scared of you physically. So it's like you're being treated differently. Well, I'm still in touch with my family. I hope they understand my choices better now. And like, they always left me a lot of freedom kind of like to do what I wanted to do. They were like never trying to push me to do anything. I still have a lots of friends. I have a great team around me. I have my lawyers, my manager, I have an accountant. So I think the only reason I'm able to like do anything while on house arrest because it's just so restrictive, just because I have all these people around me. Just to be able to do what I've done from jail was just really, it's like all thanks to them because I would not be able to do anything on my own. We never really like expected for me to end up on house arrest because I'm just like here for ICE and like they don't really put people on house arrest. Like they just give you an ankle bracelet and a time to an appointment to report to. I can only leave for my appointments and for medical emergencies. I think it's pretty restrictive. I think there's no reason that I even should be on it. But people are so quick to say, oh, like if they see me, I don't know, having people always like, oh, she's making a joke of house arrest. But nobody's questioning. It's like, why should I be on house arrest to begin with? Like, I'm done with my crime. I repaid my restitution. I went to jail, to prison. It's like, why should I even be on house arrest? They say there are some. I don't know. I don't know a single person. Like, my lawyers don't know anybody. It's like, unless you're like really deep with a gangs. Whereas, like, immediate danger of you, like, if you're, like, out on the streets, you're, like, a threat to public safety, and for some reason they can't deport you, then it makes sense for you to be in house arrest. But it's like, I have no gang affiliations. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any history of violence. So, and, like, even if you look at Sam Beckman Freed, he is allowed to, like, go to therapy. He's allowed to, like, leave to see his lawyers. Like, I'm not. And he's, like, life in prison and I'm not facing anything at all well I spent kind of the most of my adult life in the city and um like I think like so many of my friends are here and I have so much going on in the city I just like the thing is if I leave I'll probably like be banned for the rest of my life and like my criminal case is still on direct appeal I just like have to be here to kind of bring this to an end it's as long as my immigration case is pending or as long, like, until they ease the restrictions. So it's not like a punishment, you know, like with crime, you get like, oh, you do five years or whatever. It's not like that as long as it's pending. Well, I could leave if I wanted to. So this is why I'm on house arrest with ICE. Like ICE is the uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. So that's the only reason I'm on house arrest because I'm trying to fight my immigration case. Yeah. So I've made uh, some sketches while I was in jail I used to have them on the wall but I got something else I guess this is like one of my more famous ones I've made kind of like almost 30 of like all this kind of like largely ironic sketches in jail and I was only allowed to have 9 by 12 which is like A4 I think like um, what they say in Europe <laughs> just like a regular size paper and I was only allowed to have like pencils nothing else so kind of like use the materials that I had and um that would not allow anything larger inside for whatever reason and I did like a little show earlier last year and I've been selling prints since well I have um a company like Founders Art Club they are like handling everything for me they're handling the scanning of my artworks they have my originals they're handling the prints and the shipping yeah so it's not just me yeah I have like a team around me it's all kinds of people yeah it's like all over the like some I don't know celebrities like lots of lawyers it's foundersartclub.com we have sales all over the world I think like dozens of countries because it's pretty accessible so it's like my originals are 
go from like anywhere from 10,000 until 230, but the prints are pretty cheap. They like start at 250. I'm still trying to figure out, I would like for it to be more focused on what I'm like doing now, but I also don't want to kind of like, you know, anybody who will like buy my book that will expect me to address what happened in the past, obviously, because this is like how people know about me. It will be like a, like a good balance between the past and the present, because you also, it's like, you know, it's really hard to move on if you like being stuck talking about the past all the time. And I don't want for that to be like what I'm known for trying to kind of use it as a stepping stone and like move on to legit projects yeah, to make something that people can use. I think like I've been through so much and like nobody just really needs another like private art club in New York. I'm not really interested in like anything physical. Yeah, I want to do something different. I don't really want to do anything like an entertainment industry really that much. So I'm kind of trying to move away from that really hope that i'm going to be let off house arrest very very soon i'll just like get back on my social media just trying to figure out what works like i'm working on more art i'm just trying to see what i'd like to do next because now i have like a lot of lot more tools at my disposal you know i want to like do something with criminal justice kind of like use the experience i've been through for better or for worse i have a platform and people are listening to what i have to say hopefully i'll be able to like make a difference for other people because you know like especially with criminal justice system People who like speak out about it, who had experiences of their own, they're so easily discredited and like not being taken seriously because obviously like they're criminal. And so like they come like, yeah, they just don't always have the all the resources in this position where I do have a platform. Hopefully like I'm going to shine some light on some of them of what's going on. I hope everybody just stays tuned and um, just gives me a chance like to check out what I'm going to do next. And kind of like does not discard me as this uh, cunning, conniving like person. The reason people relate to me is because it's like so many people start to like, or, like have a dream, but they just never kind of like try to make it happen. And like, and I did, and this is what happened.